Hi guys, the snowy days continue from the window of my studio. And as I sit here watching the snowflakes gently falling from the sky, I open the package which is probably what I needed to take a break from the stress of making art. Painting academically could be very stressful sometimes. There is often a sense of pressure of making everything right that hinders me to just relax and enjoy the process. That's why I'm so glad that Crafty sent me their product to try out. Crafty promotes art therapy in the form of carefully created kits that everyone could enjoy while in the comfort of their homes. This was the first time that I tried a paint by numbers and I was so surprised with the quality of their paints and brushes. I even reused one of their brushes for my own painting as you will see further in this video. As I was finishing the kit, I wondered if I could create, or at least attempt to create, a master copy of this painting myself. I also got curious if doing the paint by numbers served as a practice to make my master study of this painting much easier. But first I had to do a practice sketch. I may not capture everything as it is, but capturing the likeness of her face would be enough for me for now. Girl with a Pearl Earring is Vermeer's most famous painting. It is not a portrait, but rather a troning, a painting of an imaginary figure. Tronies depict a certain type of character. In this case, a girl in exotic dress, wearing oriental turban, and a very large pearl in her ear. There's a sense of calm, almost timeless atmosphere in this piece. There's also this innocence on her gaze that probably attract many admirers of this painting. As I was reading about Vermeer's life, I learned that he always spent a very long time on every painting. That's why he did not complete many pictures in his life. And although I'm definitely not a master as he is, I could truly relate to that. I always find myself spending way too much time perfecting a painting or a video. I even choose not to paint for months if I don't see the result I wanted with my art. Even uploading this video got delayed because of the same problem. Although striving for excellence is my goal, I realized that obsessing too much on my idea of perfection is actually not a good thing. I have a tendency to see things as either perfect or a failure, with no in-betweens. I sometimes have trouble accepting anything less than perfect and feel like I failed if I don't achieve it. Once there was a man who tried to produce a perfect poem and a perfect picture. He thought each new effort was better than the previous one. So he destroyed all but the last one of each. When a critic said he was a greater artist than a poet, he destroyed the one remaining poem. When another critic said the painting transcended the artist, he destroyed himself. A 
According to a book I recently read called Wabi Sabi, Japanese Wisdom for a Perfectly Imperfect Life, Chasing Perfection is a Foolish Goal. Life is impermanent, imperfect, and incomplete. Therefore, chasing perfection will only exhaust us, make us depressed, and make us feel like we're never enough. We must instead find beauty in the flood, the worn, and the imperfect aspects of life. In the mid-16th century Japan, the samurai warriors who guarded the rulers' castles started drinking tea to stay awake during their night shifts. This tea time also gave them a peaceful break from their often violent lives. But later on, tea drinking became fancy and extravagant among the rich. They built elaborate tea rooms, used detailed and expensive Chinese cups, and fancy tools. Instead of a calm and simple ceremony, it turned into a luxurious display of wealth. It was then that Zen monk Murata Shoko sought to change things and made the tea ceremony not about showing off and more about its essence. He did this by using basic Japanese-made goods. He and his successors simplified the rituals, added natural elements, while embracing the reality that everything in life is temporary. The tea ceremony then became a tribute to life's simplicity, impermanence, and imperfection. We live in a time where constant stimulation, advertisements, and overflowing information are everywhere. From the moment we wake up to the time we go to bed, we are fed with messages about what we should look like, wear, eat, or buy, how much we should be earning, who we should love, or how productive we should be. Our hearts and minds are weary, but if we reflect deeper, we'd realize that there is no single way to live. There's no single career path and no perfect way to build a life. There is only evolving it and it's up to us how we choose to do that in a way that brings us joy and fulfillment. That being said, Embracing imperfection doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive to be good at something. Self-improvement is okay, as long as it's within reason and without the unattainable goal of being perfect. Instead of perfectionism, we must develop self-compassion. In a perfectionist mind, failing means being a failure. On the other hand, a person with self-compassion see failure as progress. The failure he experienced is not the end of his story. It can be the beginning of a new chapter, but only if he accepts the imperfection, show himself compassion, and choose to move forward. Learning about these concepts made me appreciate my imperfections in life and the unique qualities that made me who I am today. I learned that I should be kinder to myself and be thankful for how far I've come.